The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Gilbert, Arizona on your new fire apparatus, job number 32176. Please utilize this job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting down at the front bumper, on both the right and left side you have dual air horns. Located across the face of the bumper, you'll find four speakers. Two of them are four on the outer edges are your federal speaker for your PA system. And then also you have two inter speakers, which are your wheelin, which are for your siren. Moving upward up onto the top of the uh, front bumper, you'll find an enclosed front bumper load. Moving up onto the body, you'll find two forward-facing emergency lights. On the outer edges of the headlight cluster is where you'll find your turn indicator. Located on the inside of the headlight cluster is the high beam, and on the outer section is the low beam. Moving up from that, you'll find an additional forward-facing emergency light, and located directly in the center behind the Pierce logo is the release mechanism for your hood. On the outer edges of your right and left side, you'll have your mirror, flat portion being on the bottom and the top portion being convex. Moving up onto the windshield, you'll have three windshield wipers across the seamless windshield. And then moving up to the brow, you have five running lights. Located in the center, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. And then as we move to the outer edges over on the roof side, you'll find side-facing and forward-facing emergency light bars. Just inside of that location, you'll find the driver and passenger Opticom. Up on the very top of your apparatus, you do have go lights. This is a controlled from inside the apparatus. These are your spotlights. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of those items we just talked about. Here's your headlight cluster, turn indicator. As we move now into the front bumper area, you'll find your front discharge, which is water and foam capable. As we lift the lid here, you'll find the sections inside for your hose storage locations and also the protected gas struts. You have an inch and a half swivel down in the lower portion. This is going to be on the passenger side. As we move, this is the location for the pierce latch. Just behind that, you'll find the hood latch. Looking at the uh, passenger and driver's side doors where you'll find your Gilbert Fire and Rescue 1923 logo. Also on the side, you'll find your shore inlet 20 amp auto eject and also your air conditioning in blue 20 amp auto eject. Up onto the side of the apparatus, just above the Honoring America's Bravest 911-01. This is your e side facing floodlight. Also moving to the rear, you'll find a side facing emergency light. And then just beneath that, you'll find your water indicator for your tank level. On the side of the pump panel, just underneath the uh, running board, you will find a pull-out step. Just in front of that step, you will find your foam discharge drain and also your foam pump intake drain. Let's go ahead and start on the pump panel. We'll start in the upper left-hand corner of your pump panel, and we'll move through some of these items here. First, this red module is your Husky foam system. The green indicator is the on off switch. Just beneath that, you'll find a foam percentage digital readout. And then beneath that in the gray, you'll find the increase and decrease. To the right, you'll also find your prime and your system status. Moving further to the right, you'll find your foam level A indicator. In the gray area, you'll find your master intake and master discharge. In between those two large gauges, you'll find your vacuum and pressure test ports. Let's move all the way to the right. We'll talk a little bit about the engine information. This is the engine information here. This panel houses your oil, water, voltage, and fuel gauges, and also a tachometer in the center. There's also a check transmission at the top. You also have some additional red warning lights here for oil, stop engine, and battery. And on the other side, you'll find some warning indicators for fuel check engine and also water temp. In the middle, you'll find an audible speaker, which has the ability to be dampened down by turning right or left. Moving to the gray area once again, this is your Pierce Throttle Pressure Governor. 
The red is the indicator for idle. As we move down through the modules, you'll find a do not open throttle unless this light is illuminated. It is in green. And then just beneath that, you'll find also an audible speaker. As we move further to the right, we'll find a set of switches. First at the very top, you'll find your panel lights and then also an indicator for your pump engaged. Moving down, you'll find the driver's side and passenger side scene lights and then also your rear scene lights at the very bottom. Those switches when depressed will actually illuminate the color green indicating that they're on. As we move down further, let's talk a little bit about some of the valves. These are your tank fill and recirculating line. Moving further down, you'll find your tank to pump. We'll talk a little bit about some of the gauges, although we're not going to discuss all of the uh, pressure gauges. In the upper right hand corner, you will find your engine cooler and beneath that your engine recirculating line. As you follow that same sequence down, you'll find your primer for your fire pump. This is a push to prime. There are some instructions just beneath that. As we look to the right, you have an additional water tank level. You also have an audible alarm. This is for the low water, which indicates in red. And there's also a shutoff just beneath that for the alarm shutoff in green. Let's take a look all the way to the left hand side near the discharges. This is going to be your Husky Foam System 3 specifications and instructions. As we move further down, just a couple of warning labels I would like to advise you of. First warning regarding that uh, pressurized caps are hazardous and be cautious when you're opening. There's also an indication here that only trained professionals that have read the owner's manual should operate this equipment. To the right, you'll find your Watrous placard. This is the type of pump housing that you have. And then just on the other side of that placard, you'll find your Pierce Minimum Operations Schedule. Beneath that, because this is an aerial device, you will have the possibility of electrocution and be cautious and dangerous also when raising that uh, aerial ladder. Down on the lower left-hand corner is the driver's side auxiliary inlet. And then moving to the right, you'll find your foam intake and also tank fill or draft. Here's a close-up of that auto um, correction of the auxiliary inlet is a two and a half inch female coupling. As we move further to the right, you'll find all your associated labeled discharge drains. Moving to the right, you'll find your draft foam tank. This is the inlet to uh, fill your foam tank. Moving to the right, this is a pan door. We'll talk about that, what's behind it. It has to do with your foam operations. And then as we move further to the right, this is the lowest point. This is your pump drain. And then beneath that, you'll find your manual pump shift. Let's go over the pan door here. Behind that, you're gonna find your foam operations. There are instructions on the left-hand side of the door here. Uh, the handle in its current position is in operation mode, and if we move it upward to the vertical position, it is in the fill mode. This is your Pierce minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. The associated GPMs are on the left, and then your test press RPMs are on the right-hand side. This also has your job number at 32176. Let's move now up to the crosslays. There are three crosslay compartments here. This is just a view on the side of your apparatus of the compartment that's on the base of the ladder. As we move to the first compartment here on the driver's side, we'll talk a little bit about this item. This module is uh, when plugged into shore power, it is an air compressor which will continue to keep your service brakes filled with air. Just beneath that, you'll find the G1, which stands for Generator Continuous Power Rating. These are the two breakers associated with it, number one and number two. First one is for your main, and number two is for your cord reel on the passenger side. As we move to the first compartment door with the blue cap, this is your DEF 4.5 US gallon tank. It is blue in color, and that is your DEF tank. You also have SCBA bottle storage locations in the smaller pan doors. As we move further to the back of the wheel area, you'll find this silver cap. This is your ultra low sulfur diesel. Over the rear tires, you'll find an additional compartment. This compartment houses one, a shelf that is adjustable, but I would like to point out just beneath that, there is a danger label here regarding electrical electrocution. It's because of an aerial operation. And there's also a crush warning regarding your outriggers or stabilizers. Back to the very back of your compartment, by the ladder, I would like to point out this uh, small section inside. There's a compartment just below, but there's also a couple of gauges here. One, a sight indicator for your hydraulic pressure. The other is the front to back inclinometer. You can see from zero to five, zero to 10, and zero to 15. Just beneath that, you'll also find, this is the uh, device indicating that your ladder 
or I should say your steps, are in the upright position and stowed properly. This is the access panel to get in behind that panel area. As we look underneath the apparatus, you will find your stabilizer pads. There are two for the right and left side of your vehicle, and this is the stabilizer. And then moving up onto the top, you'll find this warning label here regarding the possibility of crush because of that hydraulic movement of your stabilizer. As we look to the left-hand side of this image, you'll find your folding wheel chocks at the rear of the apparatus. And then let's take a look at the rear section of your apparatus. There are two pull-out, drop-down folding steps to gain a loft access. On the left and right side, you'll find your brake light cluster. It is the turn, brake, and at the very bottom, backup, and also emergency lights in that cluster. Moving upward, you'll find two cupped switches here. We'll talk a little bit about what those are for, some close-ups next. You also have some scene lights and also emergency warning lights. And at the very top, you'll have an additional scene light rear-facing. At the very top, you'll find emergency warning lights. They cover both the passenger and driver side and also directly to the rear. There are an additional five compartments located here. We'll discuss each of those next. First, let's talk a little bit about what's at the very base. This is a, uh, an attachment point here or tow hook, and there is a warning label here regarding direct pull only using those tow hooks. At the very top, you'll find your traffic advisor and also a backup camera. Let's take a look at some close-ups. These are those pull-out drop-down steps. As we look, we'll talk a little bit about you have work lights and then also the uh, brighter, which are your rear scene lights. In this compartment here, this is the left side of the rear of the compartment. You have a 24-foot two section, a 16-foot roof, and a 16-foot roof. There are also some pike poles just above that. In this compartment this is your hydraulic jack stabilizers. You'll find first at the very top your override switch, which is a protected switch. And then you have your driver side stabilizer control and also rear control. When you're all set, you should have four lights that are in the green. Let's move to the next compartment. This is directly in the center. This is an access compartment here. And then just beneath that, you'll find all of your hydraulic switches here. First on the blue, these are going to be the in-out controls. In the green, they'll be the up-down in the gray area is going to be all of your ladder functions and then in the upper right hand corner you can select whether you're choosing aerial emergency power or stabilizer emergency power. Once again you should seek your owner's manual prior to operating this. Also on the rear of the apparatus you do have some warnings here regarding pressurized caps associated hazards with opening those caps while they're under pressure and then once again underneath the rear of your apparatus there is an additional stabilizer and be cautious when you're moving that down. Behind this uh, pan door, you'll also find your aerial drain. As we look inside, this is a ball valve for your aerial drain. Let's look to the right-hand side. You have a 35-foot three-section ladder and also a 10-foot folding ladder and then four additional pike poles in this location. Let's go ahead and move to the top of the aerial. This is the step before you step onto the aerial itself. This is an open compartment for additional storage location. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the items within the pedestal. First, let's start with some warning labels here. Once again, because it's an aerial, be cautious as to your surroundings. There's also an audible alarm that's located in the lower left-hand side of the panel. And at the very top, you'll find the audible speaker for the operator at the tip. Just in that pan door beneath that, you'll find your calibration and also your aerial manual control. Once again, I advise operations manual before uh, operating any of those items. On the left hand side, you can have some warning labels and also some danger labels. Refresh yourself with those. And I will talk a little bit about the placard on the left hand side in the next set of images. On the right, you will find a three section area here. First, the upper section, nozzle control, and then ladder control. In the upper right, you'll have an inclinometer. This is on the ladder itself, which will give you from zero to 80 and then zero to 20. This is the Ascendant Waterway Dry in a 35 mile an hour wind condition. Those are all of your different uh, individual settings. And then you also have Waterway Charged at 35 miles an hour. I would like to point out there is some asterisks down at the lower section, for example, icing. Please see your owner's manual for more information on that. In the upper left hand corner, you'll find your emergency stop, your ladder illumination, which is the lights on the ladder. You have tip lights, which are at the very tip of the ladder, and then tracking lights, which are at the base of the ladder. Aerial speed, normal and fast, and then emergency power. It's also your Pierce 
uh, control module on the lower right hand side. As we move down to the next you'll find your ladder controls and also nozzle controls. And in the upper left you'll have your stowed as the uh, indicator indicates that the ladder has been stowed properly. Let's move now up to the top section of this aerial. This is your intercom system. The intercom system has a power turn on and off and also a volume control. Push to talk. The listen position is automatic and you'll have that uh, by not having to depress anything. Once again here is that 0 to 80 and from 0 to 10 degrees negative. On the side of uh, each section of ladder you'll find your illumination lights for your aerial ladder. Moving up from that location, you'll find two full down steps. This is for operating your waterway at a lower position than the tip. On the side, right and left side of your ladder, you'll find additional storage locations. As we go through some of these images here of your ladder, these are going to be your tracking lights. These are the lower section on your base bed. We'll go ahead and move through some of these images rather fast. These are just for awareness as to what's on the right and left side of the aerial ladder. This is the cab area of your ladder. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the ladder again. These are the two fold down steps. These are for the tip of your ladder. As we move further up, you'll find this adjustment. This is to remove the waterway and pin it to a lower position. This is only done while you're in the stored position. These are going to be your controls, straight and fog, left and right, up and down for your nozzle itself. And then you'll find also on the right hand side, you'll find this black handle. That is on the outside of your ladder. That is going to be to go ahead and remove or disengage the waterway and then repin it to a lower section of your ladder. Let's talk a little bit about some of the controls on the ladder itself. These are your tip lights. Those are the lights at the very tip of your apparatus. As we move also, just to point out here, these are those tracking lights. This is going to be a workway in your walk area on the side of your ladder. And then as we go into the dunnage area, underneath the ladder is where you'll find this blue tank. This is your water tank. And on to the right in the green, you'll find your foam tank. There is also foam storage instructions on that tank. We're now moving to the uh, passenger side of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the compartments here. First, adjustable shelving and pull-out shelves. Once again, all of your compartments have LED lighting. We'll go ahead and move down from this section to the uh, cross compartment. You can see that you have a pull-out pegboard. There is a release mechanism on the inside located on the hinge side once it's been opened. There's also a fuel fill locations on this side, silver cap once again. You do have SCBA bottle storage on both front and rear of the uh, rear tires. Let's move to the midsection of your apparatus. I would like to point out in the lower left hand corner, this is a warning label regarding extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures and be cautious as to where you park your vehicle. It's just next to your uh, pad for your stabilizers. We'll talk a little bit about this section here uh, and then we'll move through some of the images to describe what uh, we're looking at. First starting in the upper right corner, this is your reel rewind. That is for your electrical cord. As we move to the left, you'll find your number four and number two passenger side two and a half inch discharges. The American flag Eagle Pierce logo is your large diameter intake. And then the green is going to be your large diameter passenger side discharge with a Stortz coupling. Moving down to the very bottom, you'll find a two and a half inch auxiliary side inlet. This is a ball valve and is a female. Underneath that, you'll find all your labeled drains. And as we move further to the right, you'll find additional pump drain. As we look inside the pan compartment, you'll find your intake relief valve. This is the adjustment for your intake relief. We're up in the dunnage area of your apparatus is the hydraulic uh, Harrison generator. And then slightly off or to the side of that, you'll find uh, this is going to be your foam system pump. Let's move inside the cab first. At all points of entry, you'll find warning labels here. 
Please familiarize yourself with those. You also have firefighter assist straps to be able to pull yourself in and out of your cab area. And then you do have two drop down steps. Let's go ahead and look overhead inside the cab. You'll find your headset system and also you have two rear seats which are forward facing. There are push on and off red and white lights and also grab handles which are near the uh, audible speaker for your stereo system. As we look to the very center in the doghouse, you'll find this compartment. We'll talk a little bit about that. That's the access door to get inside for your daily checks. There is also some 12 volt access points here, barrel style and also USB style. This is your transmission and oil checks. As we move through, this is your auto charge system. When plugged into shore power, this will activate. This is your Q2B. This is for your federal siren and PA speaker. Underneath the two seats that are forward facing, you do have additional storage compartments. You'll also see you have two rear facing SCBA seats and then also two grab handles in this location. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the passenger seat. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system that is the SRS logo. Just underneath that you'll find additional warning label here regarding not to block this area due to that uh, supplemental restraint system airbag. You'll also find up in the upper corner you have your push to talk and also your air horn controls. Here are some close-ups for you. This is your radio push to talk at the top and then the silver button would be your air horn. Just behind the computer section you'll find your vehicle data recorder, USB and also barrel style 12 volt access. Overhead you'll find push on and off red and white lights. You'll also find your SETCOM headset system. Moving forward you'll find your AM FM weather band radio. Moving to the left you'll find your unit radio. Just overhead of the passenger side seat you'll find emergency master, front and rear scene, driver side scene, and passenger side scene. Let's go ahead and move now to the driver's area. Down in the lower right hand corner of the right ankle of the operator you'll find the caution and warning labels. You'll also find this placard manufactured by Pierce which has the gross vehicle weight rating, date of manufacture, job title, it also has your gross vehicle weight ratings, tire pressures, also your VIN, and also your fluid capacities for components, fluids, and types. These are the steps leading up into the uh, driver's area. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, this, which is your auto charge system. When plugged into shore power, this will activate uh, for your battery charging system. You also have an air inlet. And as we look to the floor area, you'll find your air horn and also your electronic siren foot pedals. Moving up from that about the left knee of the operator, you'll find first a tech module and also your transmission and engine diagnostic port and also your ABS and display port. You'll also find the ABS diagnostic. This is also location for your regen inhibit. Moving further up, you'll find your master battery switch. It is the red quarter turn switch. And then as we move to the dash on the left side, you'll find the ignition, start, and hazard lights. Moving further to the right in this small area, you'll find your emergency master, which will turn on all of your emergency lights, your headlight switch, and also your panel and rocker dim switch. Looking at the dash, you'll find your transmission oil, DEF, and water level. The two center gauges are your tachometer and speedometer. To the right, you'll find your volts, fuel gauge, and then front and rear air pressure. Located above and below, you'll find diagnostic information that will display. General view here of the side of the driver's console. Let's first start with the uh, command center that's in the large mobile screen. You'll find that also at the pedestal. Located on the right, you'll find your Allison transmission pad. and You can find an indication here that says pump and drive. Moving to the right with your aerial master switch, PTO aerial, P uh, generator, PTO, auto lube fault, and also your load manager. Down in the next set of switches, you'll find your engine brake. This is an on-off switch. You have a low, medium, and high for engine brake, front wheel lock, and mirror heat. Moving to the very top, you'll find your EQ2B. This is your federal siren. This is also your PA system. Moving down below that, you'll find your 
road to pump switch and also from pump to road. There are two green indicators, one pump engaged and OK to pump. Both of those must be lit prior to exiting the cab for pump operations. On the very top, you'll find the go light control. This is the light control for your driver's side. Located in the front, you'll find your climate control. As we move overhead, you'll find your traffic advisor. And then I would like to point out also in the same vicinity, you'll find your Pierce seatbelt information. This is for individuals that are in your seats that are occupied. If they're green, they are in the seat and belted. If they are red, they're in the seat and not belted. Located in the very center, you'll find this red style puck light. This is a light indicating not to move your apparatus when the light is on. It's indicating that you have a compartment or something is ajar and not properly closed. Over the operator, you'll find on the left side the height 11 feet 8 inches, your length 39 feet 1.75 inches, and your gross vehicle weight rating 57,500 pounds. If you make any changes to your apparatus, please update this placard. General view overhead of the operator's seat will break down these individually. First, let's start with the emergency master in red, roof light, front warning, and side warning. The next switches down are your lower rear warning, upper rear warning, driver's side opticom, passenger side opticom. As we move just slightly to the right of that, you'll find your electronic siren, high beam flash, your perimeter lights, a future switch location if needed, front scene, rear scene, driver's side scene, and passenger side scene. This is going to be directly over the operator's head. Moving further to the right, you'll find your controls for your siren and also your PA system. General view, looking from the front to the back, those are the two forward-facing seats. Let's go now uh, into the rear section. You can also see the two SCB-8 rear-facing seats. Let's take a look at the tip of the aerial ladder. First, let's start with the controls for your streams and also for right and left up and down of your nozzle. You'll also find your tip light control at the very top of the gray box. And then you also have a two and a half inch discharge just off the side of your main waterway. Let's go ahead and take a different look at the ladder. This is that release mechanism I talked about in releasing the waterway and then removing it to a lower, port on, lower portion on the ladder. You also have a wheel valve here, which will turn on and off your waterway. And then as we move to the very top, you'll find your two right and left tip lights. Congratulations, Gilbert, Arizona, on your new 107-foot Velocity Pierce aerial ladder. If you have any questions regarding this piece of equipment, contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Congratulations and good luck.